Hey guys, Brendan here. And today I want to talk about data. So I would call it the most important tool in your workshop. Uh, something that we're using every day and relying on more and more, whether it be for looking at something basic like service schedules, service resets, maybe a procedure for a repair, torque settings, through to you know, component locations, component testing, these kinds of things. So I want to give you a bit of a run through uh, with a screen share using uh, one that I prefer, Haynes Pro, and it'll give you a really good idea of how that data provider works. Okay, so we're on the home page here, guys. Uh, we're going to move quickly here. I know you're all busy, so I don't want to show you exactly how to use everything, but I want to show you some of the features that I like most. Uh, we're going to choose a vehicle. Um, I am going to choose just a random vehicle. It's no good me showing you something that I've pre-rehearsed. It's not how the workshop works, is it? So I'll go with, say, a VW. We'll get something that's you know common but not too common. So we'll say a Passat and... Just going to choose a any old random engine in that guy. Uh, let's go with, say, something pretty late model. So we'll get this 2015 onwards. So uh, one of the first things I want to show you, what, you know, what makes this a bit different to other data providers, um, I really like this fault code section. So um, if I put in you know, a fault code, let's go with, say, PO340, which is going to be cam sensor related. Um, so it goes and grabs me the code and it's then going to direct me to information it's got relating to that. So we'll talk about smart cases, recall data, and TSBs um, in a moment, but if there were anything in those that related to this PO340, it's going to go grab it for me without me having to sift through them. That's awesome. Um, in this case here, it's just going to go and get me some uh, component information, wiring diagrams, that kind of thing. So we'll go with the front-wheel drive model. Let's click on into that. And then we will jump into the diagnosis area of it. So a few things. It has gone and given me a concise wiring diagram of really the only things I'm concerned about at this moment. So this being my ECU, the three pins, uh, the three wires for the cam sensor, and obviously we've got our wire colors, pin numbers here corresponding up, You know everything I'm going to want. And it saved me having to look through the whole diagram. I may not know where that component is, so we've got you know, very often we'll have these nice location diagrams um, through to, it, it can even give you a bit of a rundown of how sensors, devices work if you're, you're not up on it. Um, it'll also have this uh, handy sort of fault guide, uh, if you like. So it's going to run through and give you a, through a few tests, things that you would expect to see, you know, holding your hand as such if it were a component that you uh, weren't particularly versed on. Now, obviously, we can go to an extended wiring diagram just to give you a look at it. Um, but just the way the human mind works, I find just by cutting it down into just that section, you know, already it starts to make the job just seem a lot easier because suddenly all of this doesn't really matter anymore. So um, a really nice way that they lay it all out, I think. Uh, to take us back to the start, now, I mentioned the TSBs and things like that, which obviously pricks a lot of people's ears up. So smart cases are more repair solution type things that uh, Haynes put in themselves. So uh, first, uh, you know, one that's really handy that's often in VW, yeah, so the digital service record. So if you have a vehicle that has a you know, no logbook, uh, it's done online and you've never done that, it walks you through how to do the online logbook. Super handy if that's something you haven't done before. Whereas these ones are going to be, uh, you know, repair solution type things. So we'll go with, say, the AC is not operating. In this case, uh, let's say if we punched that fault code in at the start there, it would have come up with this repair solution and it would have uh, directed us through how they went about the symptom cause and the solution. Uh, very handy. Recall data is going to be more your uh, safety related type government recalls. Um, you know, have VIN ranges, very specific stuff. So it saves you having to try and look that up yourself through other means. And TSBs are going to be more uh, factory type stuff. So things that you're not going to find on your, your government recall type sites. So uh, let's go with a, a random one. Uh, we'll say uh, the engine doesn't start. Sure, let's go for it. So again, you know, Fault code, if we would have typed that at the start, um, it would have taken us directly to this TSB. Um, quite often, these are going to be pretty in-depth, you know, with uh, proper uh, part numbers from the manufacturer, you know, repair times, all of that kind of stuff. 
Uh, let's go with another one, say a judder at idle speed. And obviously this is a uh, pretty common thing of a, a misfire being caused by inlet valves, but of course they're going to have a, a TSB for that. And you might have even caught there, they were talking about a special tool with the VW part number. So quite in-depth stuff there. Um, I tend to find that repair data is where this uh, shines. Like, sure, it's got a lot in the electronics and wiring diagrams, and as we just saw, TSBs and whatnot. But some of the information that it's got in this repair data is just honestly stuff that we haven't seen in Australia before from some of our data providers. So, um, say if you want to talk settings on stuff, so we're not reading just the list of words here and trying to work out what are they talking about there. It's literally a picture of the thing with the talk settings for you know a lot of components on the vehicle. So. That is you know, super in-depth, really handy. Um, but aside from the technical drawings, the repair manuals are usually very in-depth. So let's say something common that I'll come in here for door trims. So if I need to get into a door, this is my go-to. Um, it, it's really heavy on door trims. It usually has them in there. Um, it'll often have dashes as well. So you know, full breakdowns of, of, of how to do dashes with times involved, all that kind of stuff. Um, Obviously, all of your sort of common things that you'd expect, like, say, a timing chain, and it's going to, again, obviously be very comprehensive. Um, the pictures themselves, you know, zoom them up, and they're, they're quite uh, well detailed, I find. We could click down the side here if we just wanted to go to a specific thing. Obviously, we're not going to go through the whole procedure. I'm going to go down to the bottom, though, and I could have clicked on it, but I'm going to zoom just to give you a little look. So something like special tools, you know, even if I'm just quoting up a timing belt or chain or something, uh, worth having a look down here. And I like how they give you the pictures um, on other data providers. Often I'm having to, um, you know, copy and paste that into Google to see what they look like. And, you know, a lot of the time, some of these tools, you start going, wait a second, that thing looks very much like an Allen key or a drill bit that I've got. Um, I'm not going to be going and buying a toolkit for that. Um, really handy to be able to see that there. Um, you might have caught view of a couple of others just while I was scrolling there that took my fancy. So uh, the park brake can usually be a pretty handy one. Um, this is a good example of, I reckon they'll show us in here how to do the brake pads as well. So you can find that in other areas, but like I said, you know, they'll, they'll keep uh, information in the same piece of information in different areas. So you just kind of end up having to run into it without even trying. So if we wanted to um, work out how to get our brake pads back and then you know reinitializing it all those kinds of things um, that's where we're going to find it in there um, and heading out just one last one you can't go past the fact that we've got some ADAS stuff in there so uh, let's go with, say a Ford view camera you might be doing a windscreen or something of that sort you know we're now starting to see real ADAS calibration type information I'm sure you'll agree that's just not stuff that we're used to seeing. Now, yes, lubricants, fluids, you know, your service type adjustments, repair times is extremely comprehensive. Um, you'll tend to find, you know, let's choose something like a turbo. You know, you've got these factory type uh, work numbers that are there as well. So they're not just picking these out of nowhere and you can modify that a bit if you're making a job and whatnot. Um, similar thing when you go to say your lubricants, you know, we're, we're talking uh, factory type numbers for stuff, so it's, it's really nice having that part number there if it were a specific odd thing like this and you know, you're, whoever you're with, Penride or whatnot, don't do anything, you can literally just call up with that part number. Okay, so um, you can imagine that I was looking at all categories there, but you could break that down, but we don't have all night to go through all of that stuff. Maintenance, again, you know, nothing too uh, extreme there. We've all seen our service schedules and you can imagine uh, what they uh, represent. I don't think that's very fun, um, but obviously it's going to have all the stuff you need and say like your, your light resets and all that kind of thing. Okay. Um, let's get into, say, if I go into my electronics again, because we didn't delve anywhere near as deep as we could have in that. So some things that are really different that this has, let's go to say locations. Now tell me the last time that you were in uh, your uh, data provider and you got stuff like this, like all the ground points on the vehicle. Easy. Let's go test them. Doing stuff like, uh, say, modules. So modules are all through the vehicle now, you know. That's half the bloody battle finding these things. So uh, look at this. We get every module where it is in the vehicle. One picture. Again, um, you know, go and get it done. 
Uh, if we were to, obviously, fuses and relays is going to be an easy one. But let's go to, say, the engine compartment. We know where everything is. You know, we can click on it and, and go to them. It's then obviously going to link through to the wiring diagrams, all those kinds of things. Um, if we just wanted to bring up our uh, wiring diagram like we had previously, obviously we can uh, head in here. We could choose any of these just like it chose for us. Um, it's going to show us, you know, all the things that are inputs and all the things that are outputs. Um, again, like I said, going through location. So um, I hope it gives you a little bit of a, a click around, you know, from here. Um, to be honest, I'd recommend going and getting the free trial if you want to have a click around. They're not the kind of uh, company that's going to hound you and as soon as you sign up for the free trial, they've tried to lock you in. You know, they know the product that they've got there. Um, really, it's just going to come down to whether it suits your workshop. So just like a lot of uh, data providers out there, you know, they... Uh, may not hit the mark for the vehicles that you see coming through. Um, whereas you may find that, okay, I use it for a couple of weeks. I found that, yep, there's a lot of vehicles that it's hit the mark for me. This is really going to add to my arsenal of data. And, you know, the only way you're going to find that is trying it out. So thanks for sticking around, guys. And, um, yeah, I recommend going and having a trial.